Hello, here to take your questions. Welcome back, the leader of Canada's Conservatives, Aaron O'Toole. Bonjour, Monsieur O'Toole. Bonjour, Bonjour Archie. Archie. Bonjour, Leslin. Merci d'être là avec nous. Chers amis, encore une fois, nous allons prendre vos questions. Alors, faites-nous le privilège d'écrire présentement vos questions que vous voulez adresser à votre leader sur la portion chat de votre application Zoom. Et nous allons prendre vos questions rapidement. I got the first question uh, from... Emma from BC, yesterday you talked about reaching out to new Canadians. I get that we need to reach out to more Canadians if we want to form the government. So, are, so how are we doing that, especially in places like Vancouver and other big cities? Well, thank you, Emma, for the question. And it's great to be back with you, Leslie, uh, Leslin and Archie. Uh, we need to grow this party. We need to make sure that we include more people in our mission to get the economy back on track to secure our future. That means new Canadians, many of whom have been attacked by Mr. Trudeau as business cheats if they're a small business owner. So many small business owners in the lower mainland of BC, the greater Toronto area where I'm a member of parliament, businesses are in crisis. They're unsure about the future. We have to have a plan to save Main Street, as I said. And in the same approach, we will grow support with new Canadians sharing our values as Conservatives to get the economy back on track, a million jobs in the next year, and make sure that all Canadians know we deserve an ethical and competent government in Ottawa. That is what we will offer. And Emma, more new Canadians, more women, Indigenous Canadians, people from all walks of life, you're welcome in the Conservative Party, and we need your help to get the country back on track. Thank you, Mr. Rattoul. Listen, you got Thank a question. You. Yes, great answer. So for the next question, we are going to Langford and we have Moish. And he asks, what is your response to the failure of the climate change resolution? Well, thanks, Moish. Um, it's an important question. The debate is over. Climate change is real. And the Conservatives we will have a serious and comprehensive plan on climate change to reduce emissions in the next election. It's important to me as a father of young children, as a member of parliament, climate change and fighting it is important to the Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, je vais répéter en français aussi parce que moi, c'est une question importante, primordiale, parce que les changements climatiques sont une menace pour notre société. Et on doit avoir un plan pour le, le gouvernement. Et le, le Parti conservateur va avoir un plan clair et sérieux dans la prochaine élection, en ce qui concerne l'environnement, la, la réduction des, des émissions. Et ça serait une priorité pour moi comme leader et comme premier ministre. Merci, M. O'Toole. Vous continuez, s'il vous plaît, à nous transmettre vos questions que vous voulez euh Uh, admit uh, que vous voulez transmettre, s'il vous plaît, à M. O'Toole, sur notre section Q&A de votre application Zoom. Alors, please uh, post your question for the leader using the Q&A function in Zoom. La prochaine question de Pierre de Montremblant. Uh, Pierre nous indique, uh, vous avez dit, M. O'Toole, dans votre discours hier, vous avez parlé des deux peuples fondateurs du Canada. Justin Trudeau a des relations souvent corsées avec le Québec et impose des conditions dans presque tous les dossiers. J'aimerais connaître votre approche pour le Québec et savoir ce que vous feriez de différent euh, si vous étiez premier ministre. Merci pour la question, Pierre. Comme j'ai dit hier soir, je suis fier de notre histoire, de notre identité. Je suis fier de notre histoire, les deux peuples fondateurs en partenariat avec les Premières Nations. C'est pourquoi je vais défendre euh, le français. C'est pourquoi je vais être un partenaire avec les, les provinces, pas une paternaliste comme M. Trudeau. Je vais augmenter les transferts en santé dans une manière stable, prévisible et sans condition parce que je respecte les provinces et on doit travailler ensemble pour le bien-être des Canadiens, le bien-être des, des Québécois. J'ai eu une excellente réunion avec le Premier ministre Legault 
et on va travailler en étroite collaboration sur la création de richesses à travers le pays et ça serait mon approche. Merci, M. O'Toole. Leslie, you got a question? Yes. So I have a very simple question from Glenn Armstrong. He says, yes or no, will you scrap the carbon tax? Yes. Glenn, I said last night, Mr. Trudeau's carbon tax is unfair on working families, on uh, seniors on fixed income, on the small business owner trying to make a go of it. Our border states that we compete against in Michigan, Pennsylvania, there's no carbon tax there. So we're seeing a drain on jobs. It is unfair. It's, it's uh, ineffective. We will have a serious climate change plan that gets emissions down, particularly with large emitters, partners with provinces, doesn't foist a tax on them, and supports our resource sector, getting Canadians back to work, as I said, in all sectors and in all regions of the country with a serious plan to also get emissions down. That will be our approach, Glenn. I'm a politician, so I added a little bit more to the yes or no <laughs> question you asked, <laughs> but I started off with yes, we will scrap Mr. Trudeau's carbon tax and have a serious plan to get our economy moving and emissions down. Thank you, Mr. Utul. The next question is from uh, Joseph Razinski, and he asks, um, what message do you have for social conservatives as we leave this convention? Well, thanks, Joseph. We are a big blue tent. We respect one another. And we are actually the only party in Canada that has a cross-section of everyone from all parts of the country, all backgrounds, all faiths, all cultures. And we debate the issues that are important to Canadians. And people can bring their perspective to Parliament based on their background, on their faith, on their experience. I started advocating for veterans right away as an MP because I was a veteran and that was respected. We have free votes. We try and bring compassion to public life. And we don't have a dictatorial approach like Mr. Trudeau, that you have to do exactly what he and his small group of, his, of advisors tell his MPs to do. We saw that when they finally had a free vote on the genocide taking place in China. All the Liberals actually voted with the Conservative motion. Mr. Trudeau didn't even show up. What does that say? So, Joseph. We're a big blue tent. I'm very proud of all parts of our party. We have candidates in place from all parts of our coalition, and we're going to be singularly focused on securing our economic future, getting people working, and getting Canada back on track. Oh, that's music to my ears. Thank you for that answer. And the next question is from Michael Bailey, and he asks, The Trudeau Liberals have been the most corrupt government in Canadian history. How will an O'Toole government ensure accountability? Thanks, Michael. You're 100% right. You know, how disappointing must it be to Canadian civics classes in high school to have to explain that Prime Minister Trudeau is not facing one ethical violation, not two. He's undergoing his third personal ethics investigation as prime minister. We've seen other ministers. We've seen Mr. Morneau resign after the, the WE scandal. The scandals, the insider deals are, are unacceptable. So last night when I, I announced Canada's recovery plan, the second pillar of that plan is securing accountability. We're going to have the most comprehensive anti-corruption law in Canadian history to stop the insider access, whether it's The, the WE scandal, SNC-Lavalin, they threw Mark Norman, a distinguished admiral, under the bus because of liberal cabinet uh, machinations. So we will have enhanced penalties for the Conflict of Interest Act. Mr. Trudeau, whether it's the private island holiday or whether now the investigation on the WE scandal, SNC, he's faced no consequences. And what signal does it send to all the liberal MPs when their leader is violating the personal ethics code of, of the Canadian Parliament. So we will have penalties attached to that. We're also going to close some of the gaps in the Lobbying Act because we've seen under Mr. Trudeau, there's one line of rapid access for their friends, for their family, and for their insiders, and all other Canadians are left to the back of the line. We're going to clean up the corruption in Ottawa. 
That's how we're going to put it forward through an anti-corruption law. Merci, Monsieur O'Toole. Uh, thank you, Michael Bailey, for your question. Vous continuez à poser vos questions, s'il vous plaît, à notre chef en utilisant le bouton Q&A sur votre application Zoom. Vous continuez à le faire maintenant. La prochaine question est de Suzanne euh, du Québec. Suzanne veut savoir, Monsieur O'Toole, est-ce que la francophonie du Canada peut compter sur Aaron O'Toole et le Parti conservateur du Canada? Absolument, Suzanne. Et c'est la journée aujourd'hui, journée internationale de la francophonie aujourd'hui. Et comme, comme j'ai dit, je suis fier de notre histoire comme un pays, les, les deux langues officielles. C'est pourquoi on va moderniser les lois sur les langues officielles, pas juste un livre blanc, une publicité de M. Trudeau et Mme Joly. On doit moderniser et travailler avec les commissaires des langues officielles. C'était Brian Mulroney qui a, a modernisé la dernière fois. Je vais moderniser comme premier ministre parce que c'est important pour les communautés francophones minoritaires à travers le pays, à Saint-Boniface, à Manitoba, à les Acadiens, en Ontario. C'est important et c'est une grande part de notre identité. Euh, et la francophonie internationale, c'est une opportunité pour le Canada aussi. Et je suis fier de nos communautés francophones à travers le pays. Merci beaucoup. So, the next question is from Nathan Ryan. Nathan asks, Mr. O'Toole, in order for us to form a government, a, a conservative majority government, we must win seats in all regions of the country in particular, Atlantic Canada. What is your plan to win seats in the smaller Atlantic provinces like PEI and Newfoundland and Labrador? Thank you, Nathan. We need to secure Canada's future, and that means jobs and opportunity, as I say repeatedly, in all sectors of our economy and in all regions. Mr. Trudeau's reimagining of the economy, that's his style of Ottawa knows best picking and choosing which Canadians will recover from COVID and which will not economically. That's unfair. It's not the way we will approach things. We need the whole country to move forward. And Atlantic Canada, it's important. I got my start politically as a volunteer with the Nova Scotia PC party, both my wife and I volunteering. There's a great base of volunteers and support. We're attracting incredible candidates. In fact, former Liberal cabinet ministers, Mr. Curry in PEI leaving the Liberal Party because of the damage Mr. Trudeau is doing to our economy because of the ethics and the corruption, and now running for our party in Charlottetown. The Trudeau government has ignored the offshore and Newfoundland and Labrador and their, and their economic challenges. We will work with them on that important sector and opportunity. The fisheries crisis it was Chris Dontremont, our MP and our team that were fighting for these interests The minister, the liberal minister, Jordan, was ignoring this crisis. So was the prime minister. So Atlantic Canada is very important. Jobs and opportunity particularly. So we need more strong conservative MPs from Atlantic Canada to be a voice. Because quite frankly, the liberals have ignored Atlantic Canada. And in 2015, they had every seat, but didn't have a real voice for the interests of Atlantic Canadians. We will fight for those interests. Thank you, Mr. Tool. The next question is from Eileen Matter, and she asks, uh, our speech is facing an increasingly being attacked with the present liberal government. What are you planning to do about the threats to freedom of speech? Thanks, Eileen. You know, you know, it was an interesting moment for me as the opposition leader to quote Pierre Trudeau to Justin Trudeau in the House of Commons. I had to remind our prime minister, that freedom of speech is a, fundamatic, a fundamental democratic pillar. I quoted his father to remind him of that because it was Mr. Trudeau who was trying to say sometimes freedom of speech needs to be curtailed if people are uncomfortable or upset. No, that's not how a democracy works, Mr. Trudeau. You have to respect the fact that other people will not share your point of view. If you stand up for free speech, that means defending things that you don't agree with that might actually turn your stomach. We have rules for hate speech in Canada. 
And provided there's nothing that's identifying hatred towards an identifiable group, that's the standard, there will be a range of views. And in, in this culture of, in this time of cancel culture and other things, we need a party like ours to say, look, we need to protect free speech, we need to encourage debate, and we need to have a responsible and respectful debate on all issues facing Canadians. Ignoring issues, not allowing voices to be heard, that's undemocratic. So I'm proud that our party, including throughout this convention, has had an informed and respectful debate on a range of things. That's what Canadians expect. And that's what you will get, Eileen, from a Conservative government. Awesome. Thank you for that response. Now, the next question comes from Peter Rowe, and he poses the question, to achieve an economic recovery, we will require a secure and stable supply of energy to fuel the manufacturing, construction, and agricultural sectors. How are we going to convince Canadians that petroleum will continue to be a majority component in our energy mix for decades to come and that we must build the pipeline infrastructure required to deliver this vital supply to all Canadians without fear of interruption? That's a great question, Peter. Thank you for asking it. And more Canadians need to know that energy hydrocarbons, our success in, it, in Alberta and Saskatchewan is not just Western Canada's success, it's Canada's success. It helped us recover from the 2009 global recession. It provides jobs not just in those provinces, across the country. And you know what? Our oil and gas, our softwood lumber, our minerals, our resource sector is the most environmentally and socially responsible in the world with the highest standards, calling it ESG is what international investors look for now, environmental social governance. I call it ESGI, environmental social governance with indigenous partnership and participation. <clears throat> Our resource economy is the best in the world. We should be pushing and, and supporting it and exporting it to other countries in favor of energy from dictatorships or countries that don't respect human rights, the rule of law and all these ESGI uh, uh, measures. It's also why we need to get our resources to market and across the country. The, the risk with Enbridge Line 5 right now, we're trying to remind people in Quebec and Ontario, the propane needed in so many thousands of homes, the, the fuel for Pearson Airport, the economy is so important and Mr. Trudeau hasn't really even made a case for the Enbridge Line 5 line. So we are going to be very proud of our resources whether in the ground or in our heads. Canadians need to get back to work. We need to secure a future. And I'm going to be trying to, to educate more people on why we should be proud of what we produce here in Canada. Belle vision, merci. La prochaine question, Luc de Gatineau demande, « Partout au Canada, les professeurs dans les universités font face au débat de la liberté d'expression. Quelle est votre position, M. O'Toole, face à la liberté d'expression? » La liberté d'expression, c'est primordial pour notre société et c'est fondamental. Et c'est pourquoi on doit protéger ça. Comme j'ai dit euh, avant en anglais, c'est important, mais malheureusement, M. Trudeau, il ne comprend pas ça. Euh, et maintenant, nous sommes dans un temps avec cancel culture et, et les enjeux comme ça. On doit défendre nos principes nos valeurs comme une communauté, comme une société, incluant la liberté d'expression. Nous sommes le seul parti qui va défendre les valeurs et les principes comme ça euh, au Parlement et dans euh, notre société. Donc, c'est un enjeu important pour moi et pour nos membres. Merci beaucoup. La liberté d'expression, c'est très important. Ah, the next question comes from Lorna Vischer, and she says, Hello, Mr. O'Toole. I would like to ask you, what will you do for our oil industry? Thank you. Well, thanks, Lorna. I, I talked a little bit about that with, with Peter's question. We're proud of what we do in Canada. In fact, when Mr. Trudeau went away as prime minister, went overseas for the first time as prime minister, he mocked the resource sector. 
he said, we're not just about resources, we're resourceful now. In one, one sentence, he mocked tens of thousands of people, and it showed a profound lack of understanding. The innovation we've had in the energy sector is world leading with slant dr uh, drilling, steam assisted gravity drainage. We've been able to lower the carbon intensity of Canada's energy sector far more than uh, anywhere else in the world because we care about it. Our regulators here can be trusted, the transparency in Canada. So you can actually know when, when we have reduced greenhouse gases, you can trust that that happens because we're a transparent, we're a democratic country. You can't trust that in Saudi Arabia or Venezuela or Russia. The free world, if they care so greatly about the values of environmental and social governance, of human rights, the rule of law, they should be consuming resources from a country that is a leader in all of those things, Canada. So, Lorna, I'm very proud of those sectors, those workers. They've, they've been left out in the cold by Mr. Trudeau, in fact, attacked on a few times with legislation and with a, an Ottawa knows best approach. Before I joined the military, my first job that had me leave home, working pipeline inspection for TransCanada Pipeline in Ontario, getting products safely to market. I think we need to have a much more serious talk about how important our resource economy is to our future. We need to secure the future for all Canadians coming out of COVID. That's why we can't afford Mr. Trudeau's reimagined economy that will leave millions out. Conservatives will stand up for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. <laughs> Next question is from uh, Angus Mombi. He asked, uh, in the past, you have said that blue-collar workers are no longer being served by the NDP and should uh, be supporting us. What is that belief based on? It's based on experience, Angus, I, and what I've seen Mr. Trudeau do. I grew up in a union community. My dad worked at General Motors, Oshawa, Bowmanville, the CAW, now Unifor. They built a sense of community. They had the backs of their members, and I, I respect that. And I want to partner with that because right now, our party, Conservatives, Angus, we're the only party that supports all of these sectors of our economy. Mr. Trudeau failed steel and aluminum workers in the Saguenay region of Quebec, in Hamilton, and Sault Ste. Marie, and Kitimat, BC. These resources are aluminum in BC and Quebec, some of the greenest in the world. And Mr. Trudeau signed a deal that allows Chinese aluminum to go into Mexico and build auto parts with aluminum that is seven times more carbon intense than Canada's. Mr. Trudeau has let down working families. Mr. Singh's party has totally forgot their roots standing up for working families and private sector unions. He's had members of his party supporting the shutdown Canada movement and the illegal rail blockades hurting working families from coast to coast to coast. So Angus, I'm trying to reach out and build a big coalition to get our economy back on track. And if that means reaching out, building trust with union leaders, I want their members to work in all of those sectors. I think we share more in common than with all the other parties. And that's why I'm reaching out. That's what leaders do. Thank you. The next question is from David Wood. He says, the Trudeau government attacked small businesses with additional tax regulation. That is nearly impossible for business owners to manage. How will you address this for small businesses? Thank you, David. And I've mentioned this many times, particularly with, with businesses just holding on. A lot of new Canadians are entrepreneurs and, and start new businesses in higher uh, percentages than, than other groups in Canada. They've been attacked by Mr. Trudeau years ago when he said, well, people start small businesses just to avoid paying taxes. That was the most disconnected comment I've ever heard from a prime minister. There are so many families. I've seen it in my own riding where some of our favorite small businesses have already closed. The entire family is dedicated to the well-being of that, of that store, of that restaurant, of that small shop. They, they're on 24-7. Something goes wrong. It's, it's your livelihood. It's your joy. It's your passion. They're not tax cheats. They're actually building the country. I'm inspired when I meet business owners in Surrey, in Brampton, in Mississauga. Within 20 years of coming to Canada, 
They are running a business and they're hiring 20, 30 other people. They're supporting other families, taking risks, building the economy. We need to respect that. So our saving small business plan, we will save Main Street. We're going to have some incentives and, and some policies to help these businesses restructure or obtain loans or assistance to survive this COVID period. Some of them are just hanging on by a thread. And then we need them to thrive afterwards. Two-thirds of Canadians work for a small or medium-sized business. So if Mr. Trudeau lets a lot of them fail, we're also going to have chronic unemployment. So we're going to be holding up small businesses as, as the bedrock of our economy, not attacking them as the Liberals do. Merci. Uh, la prochaine question de Marilyn de Drummondville. Ça va comme suit. La naïveté de Justin Trudeau envers le régime chinois communiste est extrêmement décevante. Qu'est-ce que vous ferez lorsque vous serez premier ministre pour que le Canada soit respecté et prenne la menace de la Chine au sérieux? Merci, Marilyn. C'est une euh, bonne question. Monsieur Trudeau, malheureusement, est toujours en dehors de la ligne avec la Chine avec les droits humains, à, à les Ouïghurs, le génocide là-bas, Hong Kong, Huawei, dans notre système de 5G. On doit avoir une approche sérieuse en ce qui concerne la Chine. On doit travailler en étroite collaboration avec nos alliés, particulièrement les États-Unis et l'Australie, pour équilibrer le commerce international on doit bannir Huawei dans notre 5G. Et c'est important pour notre pays comme un pays démocratique. Et malheureusement, comme vous avez dit, M. Trudeau est toujours naïf en ce qui concerne la Chine. Merci, M. O'Toole. Leslie? Yes. Next question. So, Patrick Novak says, Hi, Mr. O'Toole. What do you think is the greatest issue facing Canada in the next election? Patrick, my kids, Molly and Jack, they're 14 and 9. Mr. Trudeau, in his time as prime minister to date, has put half a trillion dollars of debt on their shoulders. Think about that for a moment. Half a trillion dollars of debt and less opportunity for them to work. And particularly in southern Ontario and in the lower mainland of BC, their, their, their generation won't be able to afford a home. So we're actually setting up our children's generation to fail because of Mr. Trudeau's poor and weak leadership today. Deficit would have happened in the pandemic, but they have no plan to ever get back to some semblance of balance. That's why I've said as part of our Canada recovery plan, we will have a plan to get our budget back to balance over the course of a decade, helping businesses, helping us secure that economic future in the short run, but responsibly addressing and winding down excessive spending. If we don't do that, we're dooming our kids and our grandkids to having a less prosperous experience as a Canadian. Patrick, I won't let that happen under my watch. I'm in politics for my children, as I know You know, Leslin is our candidate. I know our, our caucus always refer to their family and children. That's what motivates us, not access to, to power and insiders, which is the motivator for, for Mr. Trudeau and the, and the Liberal Party. So, Patrick, that is what consumes me. We need to get Canada working again. We need to secure a future for our kids. And we need to get our economic and our budget under control. We cannot afford another term of Justin Trudeau. Great Merci. question, Patrick. And over to you, Archie, for the next question. Thank you, Leslie. Merci. La prochaine question de Ruth Marocco. Uh, she says, in your speech last night, Mr. O'Toole, you said that the Conservative Party needed to change. Can you please give more specifics regarding what parts you want to change? Thanks, Ruth. We have to have the courage to change. That means we need to reach out and grow support. As I've said, I want more Canadians seeing a conservative stare in the mirror. If they're concerned about the debt I just talked about, if they're concerned about the unemployment and the crisis and the, and the mental health toll, the pandemic, if they're concerned that Canada's in 50th place or so in the vaccine rollout, 
100 years ago this year, we discovered insulin and we're world leaders and have been in biosciences. And now we have to rely on other people and even take vaccines from a fund for developing countries because Mr. Trudeau didn't plan, didn't make sure we were ready. So we need, as part of our change, to reach out. But we also have to recognize we can't, we can't wage another election just hoping that people come to our point of view on certain issues. I want us to have a serious and comprehensive approach on climate change. That is not the tax approach of Mr. Trudeau that drives jobs away and hurts low-income families, but a plan that will get emissions down while we champion job growth across the country. We need to show that we can be more welcoming to people that haven't voted for us before. As I said, union members who maybe thought we, we had squabbles in the past, we're reaching out. We're reaching out to the LGBTQ community. Um, I've, I've always stood up. We've got passionate advocates in our caucus, like Eric Duncan, talking about the unfair blood ban. Um, we need to show that more Canadians can have their concerns, their worries, their values reflected in our party. So, Ruth, I think it's, it's addressing policies in a new way, but it's also making sure we communicate our conservative principles in new ways to new people. If we do that, we will win, we will unite a divided country, and we will ensure a prosperous future for our children. I'm passionate about the plan we're developing, and I'm very proud of our team. Thank you, Ruth, for your question. Listen, please. Yes, so the next question comes from Leanne Deutzel. She asks, how do you plan on reaching out to the West and getting the messaging out to the West of unity with the separation movement going on? Thank you, Thank you Leanne. First off, we've got an incredible caucus from Alberta and Saskatchewan. In fact, the Liberal government isn't a full national government. They don't have an MP from one of those two provinces. That's why Mr. Trudeau ignores and really doesn't understand the real challenges there. I'm proud of our passionate uh, members of parliament who are, who are fighting, who are raising these issues. The West needs to be treated fairly and with respect. And I've said we can heal the national unity discord by electing a conservative government. I've said, I've worked on pipeline inspection. I've worked in the private sector and seen how important resources are to our national economy. We will be proud of what we do, and we will make sure we get Canada back on track. As I say, jobs in every sector and in every region. And Leanne, that is the way to make sure that we address the, the growing seeds of frustration and division in the West, defeating Mr. Trudeau. To do that, we have to win and grow our, our party. But that is the route to take. Westerners are patriotic Canadians. They want to get the country back on track, and we're going to use our incredible democracy to do that. And Leanne, the way Westerners, the way all Canadians who are worried about our future can ensure that Canada succeeds is voting Conservative in the next election. Thank you for that question, Leanne, on national unity. And the next question is over to Archie. Tout à fait. Et à la suite d'avoir parlé, M. O'Toole, de l'ouest du pays, la question suivante est adressée par Patricia, qui vous demande comment on connecte avec les Québécois qui votent actuellement pour le Bloc? Merci, Patricia. C'est important pour les Québécois et Québécoises d'avoir une voix forte à, à, à Ottawa. Comme j'ai dit, sur la table des décisions à Ottawa. Le Bloc québécois est seulement une partie symbolique, avec les projets de loi symboliques. Il n'y a pas une opportunité pour, pour les, les, les politiques dans les intérêts des Québécois avec une partie comme ça. Mais notre parti, on va remettre notre pays sur les rails avec les emplois, les opportunités, particulièrement dans les régions. Il y a une pénurie de main d'œuvre là-bas maintenant. On doit corriger ça. Il y a euh, les, les régions ont besoin de l'Internet haute vitesse. On va cibler une politique sur ça dans la prochaine élection. Le Bloc québécois, selon moi, est passé date. Les Québécois 
et les Québécoises méritent mieux. Et nous sommes prêts pour, pour, comme un gouvernement en attente, mais on doit attirer les Québécois et Québécoises dans la prochaine élection. Merci, M. Autour. So the next question comes from Seth Burke in Grand Prairie, Mackenzie. He asks, what is your plan to engage more young people in the Conservative Party of Canada? Well, thanks, Seth. I'm really proud. We have some incredibly talented uh, young people interested and involved in our movement. In fact, our internship program, which will be sort of partial virtual this year, shows just how many smart, passionate, patriotic young Canadians there are in our movement already. But we do have to reach out. This is another area, Seth, I talked about the impact of the pandemic has hit some groups harder than most. Young people, women, uh, underrepresented uh, groups and, and groups at the margins. So how can we have policies to address that inequality that we're seeing as a result of the pandemic and speak to younger voters in new ways, Seth? And this is a a great example of why we need a clear and serious climate change plan. Younger voters expect that from us, and they will get that from, from me and our team. We also have to say to them, what has Mr. Trudeau given you over six years? Half a trillion dollars of debt that your generation will have to pay off, less employment opportunity. In fact, with young people, there's unpaid internships, lack of, of contract and st steady jobs. They're, giving, they're being given more debt and less opportunity. So it's time for better. And I think if more young people can see their economic interests, their, their future prosperity can be better represented by the Conservatives. We are a big tent party. We want more young people to be a part of it. And I think communicating with them on those financial, those economic, those job-based principles at this time in their life and career, they feel stuck. We will win more support in the next election. And Seth, we're going to need your help because this is where all our members have to do this. Not just the leader, not just the, the MPs, not just candidates. All conservatives have to reach out to make sure that we grow that coalition to get our country back on track. Merci, M. Auto. Prochaine question de Maurice euh, de Drummondville au Québec. Euh, M. Maurice vous demande comment améliorer notre système de santé Bien que ce soit une responsabilité provinciale, Justin Trudeau n'augmente pas les transferts en santé. Est-ce qu'on peut compter sur votre soutien sur ce point? Merci pour la question, Maurice. Euh, oui, comme j'ai dit, je vais augmenter les transferts en santé sans condition. Euh, j'ai eu une excellente conversation sur ça avec le premier ministre Legault et les autres premiers ministres. C'est une question de respect euh, actuellement parce que c'est une chambre de compétences provinciale. Et les fonctionnaires à Québec ou à Toronto ou à Victoria connaissent les enjeux mieux qu'un fonctionnaire à Ottawa. Euh, mais il y a euh, des, des besoins maintenant, particulièrement les CHSLD, euh, après la pandémie. On doit prendre les leçons de la pandémie et corriger la situation pour nos aînés. Hier, j'ai annoncé une, une politique spécifique euh, sur la santé mentale. Euh, je vais créer euh, quelques politiques spécifiques pour la santé mentale de, des Canadiens. Euh, ça serait une priorité euh, aussi. Et je vais être un partenaire, particulièrement euh, sur la santé. Merci, Monsieur Tool Lifflin. Excellent. So the next question is from Angela Dunbar, and she asks: in built in in the rebuilding of the economy, how do you see engaging indigenous governments and peoples? Thank you, Angela. In, indigenous reconciliation is a very important priority for me. In fact, my first question as leader of the opposition was on reconciliation. It was actually on a truth and reconciliation recommendation with respect to healthcare. In fact, we saw the terrible case of Madame Echequan in, in uh, Quebec, and we all have to recommit uh, to better. And that will be my approach. And I've had good conversations with uh, First Nation leaders across the country. I also think economic reconciliation can be a huge part of it. I've talked about 
indigenous participation and partnerships in resource development. When Mr. Trudeau cancels a pipeline or brings in legislation that hurts the resource sector, you know who he hurts the most? Indigenous communities who in many instances can be a partner, a revenue sharing partner, an employment partner. And we need to make sure that that prosperity is part of it. We need to achieve an end to, to the boil water advisories on reserves, not just with promises and words that Mr. Trudeau had no plan to implement, but by building partnerships. And there's a, there's a generation of Indigenous leaders in this country that we should be partnering with and helping First Nations be part of the governance of this uh, of tackling these challenges. So Angela, less of the Ottawa knows best because Ottawa hasn't gotten it best in the last few generations when it comes to the situation on reserve or, or outcomes for Indigenous Canadians. I will, through partnerships, through a strategic plan, and not by focusing on photo ops like Justin Trudeau does, but the follow ups, demanding performance and demanding improvements as we tackle these important issues. Merci, Monsieur O'Toole. Next question is from Rakesh David. Uh, he says, I, Mr. O'Toole, some Canadians may be worried that if a conservative government is formed, massive spending cuts will immediately begin and pandemic financial supports will be cancelled. How do we address these concerns and ensure that they know this won't be the case? Thanks, Rakesh. It's been sad to see in the middle of a pandemic, Mr. Trudeau and some of their, their groups already running misleading negative ads uh, about me. We're in a pandemic. We, we should be focused on getting the vaccines. Mr. Trudeau's late in that department. Where, where's the national plan of rapid testing? Where's the plan to reopen and get our economy back on track? Rather than focusing on the well-being of Canadians, Mr. Trudeau seems to be focusing on the well-being of the, the Liberal Party and his, and his insiders, and they're funding negative campaigns. The last Conservative government increased health spending every year, transfers to provinces in a predictable, fair way. We will do that. I will do that. We will also take a responsible approach to our economy. I've not said we're going to balance the budget in one term. We're going to provide help. We're going to have people's backs. But we are going to have a plan to make sure we don't burden our children with another trillion dollars of debt. We have to get people working. And that's why we can't afford Mr. Trudeau's picking and choosing which, jo which jobs are better in his view. So Rakesh, help us tell Canadians that our Canada recovery plan that I announced last night will get people working, will restore ethics in government again, will have a national plan for mental health. We'll make sure we're never again unprepared with PPE vaccines. We expect better and faster from the government in a crisis. And we will have a balanced approach. No cuts, no, no uh, sudden moves like that. We need to make sure Canadians are well, back to work, the economy and mental wellness focused on, and then in a responsible way, get our spending under control. The Conservatives have a plan. And we need Canadians to lend us their trust so we can get this country back on track. Thank you, Lislin. So perhaps you got the last question for uh, this Q&A. Yes. So the last question comes from Adam Benny. And he says, hello, Mr. O'Toole. What is your strategy in winning Toronto, the GTA, and Southern Ontario? Thank you. Well, thanks, Adam. Um, I'm proud to be kid from Bowmanville, Ontario, who served in the military, lived across this amazing country, worked in the private sector, and became a member of parliament. And I'm honored to, to lead the, the country that found, or the party that founded this country, and the party that will get this country moving again post-COVID. I would be the first prime minister from a GTA riding in our history. So I've worked in and around the GTA. I've supported Rotary clubs and charities and, and the military and family, uh, veteran family work I did all in the Toronto area and Southern Ontario. I'm a proud conservative. And so I'm reaching out. I want more people in that region to vote for us in the next election. I want to build the trust. I want them to know me. 
the same aspirations many families in the 905 in the suburbs in that region have for their children, Rebecca and I have for our children. We've worked hard for everything we have. We want our kids to, to have an opportunity. We want to address some of the mental health challenges we've seen young people across the country face. And we have to have a responsible plan for our economy and getting our country moving forward. And I think, Adam, the aspirations of many people in the GTA and in, in Southern Ontario are going to be reflected by our party. We're going to stand up for you, your family, and your community, not the insiders in Ottawa, not an Ottawa knows best approach, and I, with a leader from the region who knows it and, and is, a, is a proud product of it, I'm hoping I can earn that trust. We need to earn the trust so that we can get Canada moving again, deal with national unity, ensure our prosperity, and restore our respected position on the world stage. All of those things have diminished under Mr. Trudeau, so all Canadians deserve better. Well, Everyone. thank you. I, I had said that was the last question, but yep. I think we're going to balance it off with a French question. So over to you, Archie. Merci, Monsieur O'Toole. Si ça vous dérange pas, on aurait quelques questions supplémentaires qui viennent d'entrer et qui devraient être adressées. Merci, Alison. La prochaine question est de l'île du prince édouard C'est Noah qui écrit et vous demande comment on va balancer le budget et réduire la dette. Merci, Noah. Uh, j'ai un plan pour ça. On doit ré réduire les dépenses d'urgence, comme la PCU, les, les autres programmes d'urgence pendant la pandémie, dans une manière juste et équitable. Euh, euh, ça serait une approche pour une décennie. Mais en même temps, on doit créer les emplois pour les Canadiens et Canadiennes. Dans chaque secteur, dans chaque région, particulièrement après les PCU, les Canadiens ont besoin d'un emploi pour leur famille, pour leur communauté. Et c'est pourquoi on va cibler sur une relance économique à travers le pays. C'est pourquoi on a un plan avec cinq principes maintenant. Et c'est le temps pour notre parti parce que on doit avoir un une avenir pour nos enfants. On doit protéger notre avenir et avec, avec euh, les Canadiens et Canadiennes et euh, dans la prochaine élection avec une équipe forte et politique claire, on va gagner. Merci, M. O'Toole. Yes, Lynn? Yes. So, just one final question. As a candidate, I want to know what it is that you feel that we should be we should take away from this convention and from your speech yesterday that will help us uh, leading up to the next election. And if you could also answer that question in French also. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you for being a candidate, Leslyn. It was great to have you as our first nominated candidate in Haldeman, Norfolk, in Ontario. And I know you're Uh, you're already connecting with people so well. And our candidates are doing that across the country. On a des candidats et candidates extraordinaires au Québec aussi. Et on doit parler avec les Canadiens sur nos priorités. We must talk about our priorities. You're sort of saying, what should we do uh, on the doorsteps or the Zooms or however we distance as we're, as we're meeting Canadians? Our Canada recovery plan is our plan for a roadmap of getting Canada back on track. The five principles, and we can talk about uh, all of them. A million jobs created in one year to get Canadians working in all sectors and all regions. An anti-corruption law. It's time to restore people's trust in our prime minister's office, in our federal institutions. A, health, a mental health action plan. We must secure mental health. We've seen it impact all families. We must secure our country. We must be more self-sufficient, less reliant on countries like China and other countries, PPE, vaccine capacity here. That's important. And a plan to get the, the budget back into balance over the course of a decade, helping people as we emerge from the crisis, as we finally get the vaccines, but have a plan to get our fiscal house in order. That's the Canada Recovery Plan. On a un plan extraordinaire. Ciblé sur les emplois dans chaque secteur, dans chaque uh, région de notre pays, incluant les régions au Québec. 
on va avoir un projet de loi sur, sur corruption et les dynamis libéraux, euh, comme les scandales avec We Charity, Frank Bayless et les autres, on doit avoir un plan pour la santé mentale des Canadiens. Euh, C'est un principe pour, pour moi personnellement, comme un père de famille, mais comme un ancien combattant et un député aussi. On doit avoir un plan d'être prêt pour la prochaine crise avec équipement médical fabriqué chez nous, les vaccins fabriqués chez nous. Et aussi, on doit avoir un plan pour équilibrer le budget dans une manière juste, ciblé sur une relance économique, mais avec un plan de réduire les dépenses dans une manière équitable. C'est un plan pour notre avenir. On doit protéger notre avenir. We must secure our future. We can do that. In the, whenever the election come, comes, conservatives will be ready. And that's our plan. Merci, M. Awesome. Autour. Merci d'avoir pris ce temps euh, pour répondre à, à, aux questions des membres du Parti conservateur. Merci beaucoup, M. Outoul. Bravo à vous tous euh, d'avoir généré d'aussi excellentes questions. Vous êtes très, très bons.